Hello everyone, you're welcome to the Master Anatomy Platform. I'm Dr. Akang, and today I'll be introducing you to histology. So for the benefit of this lecture, we'll be looking at the definition of, the, of histology, the types of tissues, the tissue preparation techniques, and we'll also look at types of microscopes. Histology has to do with the study of tissues using a microscope. Tissues are made up of cells and the extracellular matrix. The extracellular matrix is just the outer part of the cell where um, the cell receives its mechanical support and also um, the parts that helps in the circulation of the cell, all right, or movement of the cell and um, transportation of nutrients into and out of the cell, all right. So it communicates a whole lot with the cell, cell membrane. Classification of tissues, these tissues are basically divided into four classes. We have the epithelial tissue, connective tissue, muscular tissue, and nervous tissue. For tissues to be visible under a microscope, it has to be processed, all right? And there are two types of processes when you want to view tissues under a microscope. We have the paraffin, resin, um, process, all right, which is also known as the paraffin em uh, resin embedded tissues or paraffin embedded tissues or resin embedded tissue. That's one. The second one is the frozen tissue sections. So let's look at the paraffin embedded tissue, what it involves. It, the tissue has to be fixed, it has to be embedded, it also has to be sectioned and stained. Afterwards, it could be viewed under the microscope. For the frozen tissue sections, the tissues have to be placed on a labeled base mold. Then it has to be dipped into a cryo-embedding medium known as OCT, Optimal Cutting Temperature Compound, OCT compound. Afterwards, this tissue is submerged in liquid nitrogen, liquid nitrogen, and after it has become very hard, frozen and become very hard, it is saved or stored in minus 80 Celsius, minus 80 degrees Celsius freezer until it is ready for sectioning, all right? So if you want to section immediately, so from the liquid nitrogen, you could just go into cryo sectioning. So we section here with the cryostats. Afterwards, the tissue will be fixed with acetone at minus 20 degrees Celsius, then stained, then viewed under a microscope. Sometimes if this tissue is for immunohistochemistry, so number seven is going to vary because at that point, we will begin to add things like um, hydrogen peroxide, uh, peroxidase and several other things to um, boost antigen antibody reaction. All right, but that's not for this lecture. The good thing about this process is that it is fast and it could be used for rapid diagnosis. So uh, in a case of oncology, in a case of oncology, you could have the um, surgeon trying to look at, examine a tumor, maybe during surgery or so, and wants to know whether it's malignant or it's benign. So um, the, the pathologist will just run this tissue, run the analysis on this tissue, and in two, three, two to four hours, the results are out compared to the paraffin embedded tissue that takes like one minimum of one day to about three days, All right? So this is faster compared to that. So let's go back to fixation of tissues in a, para for a paraffin embedded section. These tissues are always fixed in um, chemicals known as fixatives, All right? And these fixatives prevent decay of these tissues or what they call autolysis also known as putrefaction all right so many times putrefaction occurs because of the bacteria within or outside the especially because the tissue has been taken out of its normal environment so it begins to decay because there's no blood supply anymore so it begins to feed on itself again external factors could also uh, lead to the decomposition of the, that tissues. So these chemicals, these fixatives prevent all that process. Popular fixatives are 10% buffered formalin, 4% buffered formaldehyde, and this is for light microscopy, 
We also have glutaraldehyde and osmium tetraoxide for electron microscopy. After fixing the tissues properly, we go into the next stage called the embedding stage. This stage is to make this tissue hard so that during sectioning, you don't distort the cellular structure of this tissue. So the process here for, um, uh, for a paraffin embedded tissue is that first of all, the, um, the fixatives are rinsed off and dehydrated through graded series of ethanol. This dehydration means you're taking out the water, right? That came from the fixative, that came from the rinsing, right? You're taking it out. So you start from 70% alcohol to about 90%, 95 and absolute ethanol. So you, it's those graded series, ascending series of alcohol. That takes out all the water. Afterwards, you take out the ethanol using xylene. So we say clear with xylene, right? And uh, uh, it's important to note that the graded series of alcohol there, those things take about one hour per um, graded series. So if you have on the 70%, you take, keep it there for like one hour, go to 90% and keep it for about one hour, then you can move to absolute ethanol or sometimes 95% for absolute, there will be one, one hour, right? Then it stays in, you clear in xylene. And um, after that, you have a translucent tissue and um, immediately after that, you impregnate the tissue, what they call infiltrate with paraffin. This paraffin is a molten paraffin, all right? And um, it's placed in an oven of about 50 to 60 degrees Celsius, between that range. It's allowed to stay there for about 12 hours to, for proper impregnation. Afterwards, it's allowed to cool down. Then the um, paraffin becomes hard and the tissue that was already placed in a cassette will be taken out and sent for sectioning. So let's go. This is this is the uh, this is an embedding station, and this is where you have the this nozzle here. Where's my cursor now? This nozzle here is where more molten paraffin will come out and fill up the cassettes of the tissue where the tissue is. All right. Afterwards, it's going to be placed in the oven and allowed to um, impregnate properly. Okay, then allowed to cool down afterwards. So once we're done with that, we're going to section it. And um, now we have a rock hard tissue, be it, from, be it from the paraffin or from the frozen section, from the frozen tissue, right? So we, if it is paraffin embedded tissue, we use normal microtome, a microtome for it. But if it is from, um, if it's a frozen tissue, we use a cryostat for sectioning. And these sections are done in thin, very thin, thin sections with the aid of a glass or a steel blade. Glass blades for cryostats, steel blades for microtomes. All right. Sections are made very thin between one to 10 microns. And these sections afterwards are come out like films, right? Paraffin films where the tissues, you find the tissues lining and it can it be placed on warm water. Why is it placed on warm water? So that the the warm water is going to melt off the paraffin. We want to make sure we have as little as possible paraffin on, uh, on the tissue. So it's placed on the glass slide. And afterwards, after the sectioning, we, um, the tissues are stained, right? Before, before the tissues are stained, now this is a microtome. That's a picture showing you the microtome. And this is, the, this is a cryostat. Before the tissues are stained, it's important to note that again, they are taken back to because you're taking them to um, you're taking it back to eocene for, to dyes now. So you you take it back to degrading stages of of um, ethanol. So you begin from the absolute ethanol, you take it down down to water. So from there, you take it to the the dyes. So these dyes, these things are dyes actually dyes. And um, because the tissue is colorless, you need to dye the cells to be able to see and appreciate the cellular and cellular cytoarchitecture, All right? So we dye them with different kinds of dyes. There are two major types of dye, the basal, um, basic dyes and the acidic dyes. Basophilic cells are cells that um, have acids within them and they will, they would attracts basic dyes, all right? They have strong affinity for basic dyes. And those that are acidophilic, cells that are acidophilic, 
have strong affinity, affinity for acid dyes, acidic dyes. Uh, the word philic is from the word, the Greek word, word philio. Philio means love. So when we say acidophilic, it means it loves acids, right? And the things that are going to love acids are actually basic substances. So you see that the potent secretory granules would have this um, love for, for um, acid of, acidophils, while the basophilic cells are, will have love for basic dyes. So popular stains include hematoxylin and eosin, normally known as H and E. We have Gemsa, Toledin Blue, Periodic Acid Skiff, Mason Tricom, the Elshan Blue, Von Gison Stain, the Reticulin Stain, Azan, Nisil and Methylin Blue Stains, Sudan Black and Osmium, Gold Nas, Tricom, and Silver and Gold Stains. Now, there are several other types of stains, or other types of dyes, but this, I've just mentioned a few here. This is an automatic slide stainer. Automatic slide stainer. So now let's look at hematoxylin and eosin stain. This stain is the most popularly used stain. It has two components. It has both the basic parts and the acidic parts. The hematoxylin represents the basic dye component of this stain, all right? It stains the nucleus, endoplasmic reticulum, and um, ribosomes, which have nucleic acids. They are rich in nucleic acids. So it stains them blue, or sometimes purplish blue. Uh, the acidic part is the eosin. So it stains the cytoplasm, and it stains it pink, all right, or red at times. So this, is, this picture here is a testicular tissue showing you the nucleus, which is stained blue, and the cytoplasm, which is stained pink, all right? So it shows you different nuclei here, stained blue, and the cytoplasm stained pink. That's a typical example of H and E stain. Now, we go to microscopy. You're finished staining, you want to view under the microscope. What happens? There are two types of microscopy. We have the light microscope, we have the electron microscopy. And then under the light microscope, you have the conventional light microscope, phase contrast microscope, the differential inference, microscope, we have polarizing microscope, convocal, and also fluorescence microscope. But on that electron microscope, we have two types of electron microscopes, transmission and the scanning electron microscopes. This is an example of a typical conventional light microscope. It has the mechanical part and it has the optical part. This is the mechanical part, is the part that gives it that structure, the shape. So it has a base, it has a handle, all right? has a handle that uh, it also has a stage okay that is stage it also has a revolving nose piece that allows for the objectives to revolve so it has a stage where the specimen is placed on top all right and it can move right and left uh, right on the right and left axis okay it also uh, the x and y axis sorry so it has a base where the lamp is placed and which can uh, which projects the light upwards into the condenser so the that leads us to the optical parts. The optical parts is made of three parts, the condenser, the objectives, and the eyepiece. So the condenser would actually receive the focused light, will receive the light, focus it, and send it through, this is the condenser down, just underneath the stage, just underneath the stage. It allows for, it condenses the light and focuses it on the specimen. And afterwards, the image from there is transferred to the objective. The objective will magnify this image depending on the objective you have set there. It could be times four, it could be times 10, it could be times 40, it could be times 100, all right? From there, that will magnify the image and send it forth to the eyepiece. And this is the eyepiece, this is the eyepiece, all right? So sometimes you have one eyepiece, sometimes you have, sometimes you have three, sometimes you even have four. Where it's um, one, it's called mono, mono, monocular. Where it's two, it's called binocular. And when it is three, it's called trinocular. Right, so that's how the eyepieces are. So when you hear those names, it tells you about the number of eyepieces there. So the eyepiece will further magnify it. Many times the eyepieces are set at times ten. All right, so unlike the objectives that can, you can change the um, the magnification here, you can't change the magnification. It's fixed. It's times ten. All right, many times. So with that, you now have a magnification of times ten. Um, the objective 
since that one magnifies and the IP is also magnified, so you multiply both of them. So times 10 times whatever objective it was, the objective was times four, it's 10 times four, which is 40. So that the manipulation now is times 40, all right? So that's how it works. We have the cost adjuster, the cost adjustment knob, which is that knob that takes this stage up and down. It tries to move the um, object, this object on the stage, places it, takes it to focus, all right? It takes it to focus. What I mean by that is that it takes it to an angle where the light, the condenser can properly focus the light on the image and you can view, you can begin to, you begin to see the image clearly on the eyepiece. And where the image is still not very clear, there's a fine adjustment knob just before the cause adjuster, all right? That will help focus the image properly, all right? Focus the image properly. We also have the mechanical stage knob that helps to move the, this stage uh, on right, um, X and Y axis, okay? And so that's that about um, this conventional microscope, all right? So, We'll come to the end of the lecture. I'll say thank you so much for listening. You can view the site masteranatomy.info for the quiz, and um, you can also listen or watch several other lectures on that site. As far as it relates to anatomy, you can see them on the site. Thank you so much. Do have a great day. Thank you. Bye.